Hey guys, so I recently got the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable device and you guys have been asking me my thoughts on it, if I think it's a good device to use or not, and so I'm going to do like a quick little unboxing, uh, show you guys how to use it and tell you my thoughts about it. It does do live streaming and capturing, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both of those. Uh, it does have a PC free mode, which I will not talk about because I do not have the SD card that is uh, needed to do such a thing. So when you get the box in the mail, it is in really nice, hard, durable packaging, so you don't have to worry about this getting damaged in transport. Um, when I got mine, I noticed that it said uh, my name on the side, which I wasn't really sure why. I guess maybe I, was, I just thought they were labeling it so I know who to give it to. But when I opened it, I saw it actually says CG Star Slayer on it, which is pretty cool. I don't know if this is a feature they're going to offer to other people when they get these, or if it's just for people who are reviewing it. But I thought it was a nice little touch because it is actually engraved on there. So as you can see, it is really small. It's smaller than my hand. I do have big hands though, so yeah. Um, here we have the AV in, HDMI in and out, audio in and out. That's where you're going to be, uh, that's for your power source to power the device. Here, this is uh, for recording the PC. This is for PC free mode. And the SD card slot is going to be for PC free mode also. This ring actually lights up too. It lights up either blue or red to let you know if the device is on, uh, if it's recording or not. It has different um, blinking signals to let you know what's going on with it. Um, I did already open this up though. So when you open it up, you'll find an XSplit card in here. On the inside will be a code to redeem three months of XSplit. It actually is for some more of the premium features. And then you just pull this out and this is where all of the goodies are going to be. All your cables and everything like that. Um, at the very bottom of the box, it seems like it's just a little advertisement or something here. But if you shake it out, it's actually the instruction manual. Which I did not find to be very useful in all honesty. It is very confusing. They try to show you how to hook everything up with basically every single slot in this thing full, which is not always optimal. You don't always need everything plugged in. So it does get rather confusing. And then here's the cables that it comes with, of course. You know, you got the HDMI cable, you got the audio cable, you have the mini USB, USB. You have, this one is going to be especially for the PS3. You are going to want to make sure to use this when recording for PS3. And of course, your component cables for Xbox recording. It also comes with this really cool little case, the protective case. It's kind of like, what is it? I don't know what the material is, but it's nice. But the only bad thing about this is it only fits your Aver Media device. It's not going to fit anything else in there. So all these cables and stuff, if you have a backpack, throw them in there because it's not going to fit in here. This is really nice and padded though, so it will keep it nice and protected. Alright, and so now I'm going to show you guys how to use this thing. Alright, so let's say you just got your copy of Injustice for Xbox 360 and you want to record this. So here's how you would go about doing it. First, make sure your Xbox is on obviously. You want to just hook up the power as normal and have your normal Xbox 360 cables. You're going to want to grab these. You're going to want to grab this for your Live Gamer portable device. It's pretty self-explanatory. These two blue cables here are going to be for the audio, red and white. Oops. For the audio, red and white. Self-explanatory. Match the colors up. You're not going to use that video cable because you're going to be using these. Alright. Once you have this, you're going to plug it right into the AV in here with the black side down. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. It should make kind of like a little click noise when it's in all the way. Then, you need your power source. So you're going to want to Grab the mini USB here. I'm going to plug that right in the side where it shows a little picture of the PC. And then you're going to want to hook it up 
to your PC here. That's gonna power it, and you're gonna see the blue light start to come on here. Okay, that's how you know it's on. And then comes the fun part. If you're someone like me, and you have a PC where most of the stuff's in the back, this is gonna be kind of a pain in the butt here. HDMI in. So the HDMI slot that's in the back here, uh, it's kind of hard to get to for me. Okay. Okay. So once that is plugged into the HDMI slot, you're going to need to take, if you're like me, you have a TV hooked up to the computer, you need the other HDMI cable, and you need to hook it up into your out. Everything's all hooked up. Make sure you have also already installed all the programs that are necessary for this, the drivers and stuff like that. Um, if you open the instruction manual, it will tell you um, the URL to go to on Aver Media's website to download that stuff. Also, if you want to record commentary, you have to have a headset plugged into the PC. Now there is an audio in and out on the capture device, but that's only for PC free mode. If you want to actually record commentary, you're going to have to plug it into the audio jacks on your actual PC. So now you're going to want to go on your computer and click on the Aver Media Rec Central that you should have installed already. and you want to capture. So you're going to click on capture. I'm going to click on amateur just because I want to make sure all the settings are right. So you're going to want to click on game console because you're recording from an Xbox. Your video source is going to be component and you can see it pops up here. Okay. Audio source. You're going to want to make sure it's set to component. And then your microphone is going to be checked if you actually want to do commentary and stuff like that. Um, you have an option of choosing always on control with hotkeys, so you can just press a button and uh, turn the recording audio on or off, and then there's push to talk option. I just leave it on always on, it's a lot easier. The video settings, you don't really have to mess with, it's already preset. And the hotkeys are only if you want to make it so that you push a button to um, start and stop recording. Okay, so once you are good with your settings, you just want to hit ready. And one thing that I noticed for some reason on my computer, I do not see the actual game screen anymore. But it is recording for sure. So if you just go ahead and hit record, it'll start recording. And if you notice the device, it will start to glow red. And then once it's recording, you can just go into your game and play as usual. If you really want, you can record commentary. So you can put on your headset and you can talk at the same time. The great thing about this is if you're not using hotkeys and you have it so it's just set to always on, everything will automatically already be synced up. It's going to start recording both the audio and the video at the exact same time. So it'll make it a lot easier for you to match up the commentary and the video gameplay when putting it into a video editing software program. All right, so once you're done recording, you can go ahead and close this out and you can go to video folder and this is where you'll see all of your audio and video files that you recorded with this device. So this is where you'll see your gameplay and everything. And you will have audio, right now you just can't hear anything because of the fact that it's hooked up to my headset. But also in here, You'll find right before the video file is an audio file. It's an MP3 of all of your commentary from when you were playing. Okay, now if you want to record uh, gameplay from your PC, all you really have to do from this point is unhook this cable here. You don't need this anymore. If you want to leave it in, you can. It doesn't hurt, but you don't need it anymore. So now you want to go back to the Rec Central, and this time for Capture, we're going to go back to Amateur. This time you want to select Current PC. For Video Source, you want to make sure it's set to HDMI. Audio Source, 
set it to HDMI, video settings, hotkey, you know, do whatever you will. Okay, now, for some reason it goes away at this point. But you'll notice that you have everything set up on your other screen here. It is blank, so it's not necessarily a duplicate. Okay, so let's say you want to play like a PC game or something. Um, just for the fun of it, I decided to pick this mini game that somebody made for me. So, if you want to record this time, all you have to do is you you can, uh, if you have a hotkey enabled, you can press that. Otherwise, you just click it really quick. It glows red so you know that it's recording. And then you can just go ahead and start playing your game. This time, literally, your game. Yeah. In this case, it's my game. Okay, so I'm done recording. I don't have my hotkey set up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press that. Now I can go back into Rec Central, go in my video folder. And then there's my footage of the game that I just played. And then same thing, there is commentary here, but I wasn't using my mic. Oh weird, you can still hear me anyway. Something that I've noticed that's really weird when um, recording onto PC. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just my device that's acting up, maybe a compatibility issue with my computer or what, but if you look at my screen right now, it's kind of flickering, and it also is making like static popping kind of sounds. And it only does this when I actually set my audio source for Avermedia. So it's really kind of weird. If you wanted to edit it, you would just choose your video editing program. For me, it's Corel Video Studio Pro. And um, these are, you can just basically bring it right into your video editing program with no need to change the format or anything like that. So once you go into your video editing program, you just have to find the folder that your videos are logged in. Click that. Let's say we want both the audio and the video. Click on both. Open. Just drag and drop. And there's your video. Drag down here, down to the microphone, and that's your audio. And you can edit it however you want. You can, the great thing about this is like, if you like your commentary up to a certain point, but maybe somebody interrupted you and you want to cut out part of the audio, you can do that. Select, cut that out. Select this here, cut that out. And you can just take out part of it. Because of the fact that the audio is saved in a separate file, it makes it really convenient for editing. I'm not entirely sure how many BEDs of radiation that emits. Hope you're not looking to have children later. If you guys are the type that are hardcore into fighting games and you want to know, hey, is there any sort of lag or anything like that, no, there's no sort of noticeable lag. I'm not a hardcore Street Fighter player or Injustice player or anything like that. So I can't really tell you if there's uh, any sort of lag that's really going to affect you in your combos. But as a normal just fighting game player, I don't really notice anything.
So as you can see, the capture quality of this device is really, really great. Um, considering it's really cheap too, it's under $200. It's a really good buy for a capture device. When it comes to streaming, I had a lot of issues with this and I didn't have a chance to utilize the PC free mode so I can't really talk about that. When it came to live streaming, I had a lot of issues with League of Legends. It was basically only running at 25 frames per second and it was really super choppy. I just was not able to stream. I had to stop streaming after one game of League of Legends because it was just acting up so badly. So now it just put my League of Legends game on the other computer. It's just what, it's, what it needs to do. It captures what it needs to. Why? Where'd it go now? Please tell me it's coming back. My League of Legends game vanished again. Oh my God! Now it's... I see it on your uh, on your thing. Yeah. Well, it just popped up, and it's like a quarter of it is on the bottom of my screen, and another yeah. quarter is on the other screen, and then another right. half has disappeared. I can't move it right now. I can't do anything because it's not even the whole picture right now. It's the top right corner on one screen and the bottom left corner on another screen. It's showing up on the stream like that. You're right. Yeah, that sucks. Like the bottom. Yeah, you can't even see the screen. And then you're going to be so far behind. I can't do anything about it. No, it's not just you. It's super laggy. Yeah, no, there's nothing I can do about it right now. Yeah, I'm watching the stream right now. It seems pretty laggy. Yeah. Again, I'm not sure if it's an issue with my device, if it's a compatibility issue or what, but I've had minimal complications with actually uh, capturing stuff just live streaming. When it comes to using, I think this is a little complicated. So even though it is supposed to be really convenient and really easy to use, I think it's more complicated than the Avermedia Game Capture HD that I actually have. Um, it's actually, it's hooked up, it doesn't even have to be on for me to watch TV, to play my games. It doesn't affect anything being hooked up, which is really great. And when it comes to recording, I simply plug in my external hard drive and press record, and then press record again when I'm done, which is really, it's, they tried to do the same thing with this, but you can't really just leave it hooked up. You have to basically put everything back when you're done using it, which is inconvenient for somebody like me, especially because I really need every single port that I have on my PC. When it comes to if I would recommend this, honestly, I think it depends. If you really want to stream, I would not recommend this. If you are looking for a really good high quality capture device that's not as expensive as a lot of other ones, then I would definitely recommend it for that reason. It has a really great concept, but it's just not really working for me right now. But this is also, I mean, the, the device just came out. So give them a little bit of time. I had a lot of issues with my Avermedia Game Capture HD when it first came out and they were very good at fixing everything as soon as possible, as soon as they knew about it. So, and, and now it's my favorite capture device. So I say give this a little bit of time uh, maybe check out some more reviews and uh, wait for them to get some of the bugs out and then I would definitely recommend buying it.